how's it going guys tonight we've got a lot of work ahead of us so what we got here is four augers this one here is a 42 inch auger I believe that's a 36 yep that's a 36 another 36 over there and this one here is a 30 so what we got to do we got two bits that we need to either unscrew this which is probably not going to happen or we cut it off and then we've got to get this bit to mate up to that so i've got a game plan going and i'm gonna have to go pick up some material to get those done so i gotta do that to that one and then i got to do the same thing to this one unscrew that or cut it off and then weld a new square key section so that those bits can mount to that my plan is to go get some six inch round stock four inches thick and then i'm going to flame cut a square hole that those will fit in nice and snug like and then I've got to weld it to that so that's my plan for those two this one here has a section broke off and it's hard to see but you can see there's some of it right there so this one looks pretty good it looks like it broke off clean against the shank so I'm just gonna scarf off the old weld clean everything up and weld it back on this one as you can see snapped right off and I'm not really sure why that would have failed like that that's pretty pretty crazy so I've kind of inspected it there are some things that look a little strange there's kind of a void right here there's a weird looking spot here so anyway my plan for that is obviously it's got to be the same diameter on the outside here so what I'm gonna do is clean this all up probably have to scarf some of this old weld off I'm gonna have to bevel what's left but I need to maintain the integrity of what's here so that I can match it up so that's gonna be a little tricky that's that's our plan the customer just wants this welded back on and that's it as far as this one goes and that one goes so Quite a bit of work here i think i'm going to start with this one over here and i'm going to start by inspecting the whole thing flip it over with the crane inspect what we got to do to get that piece put back on get a game plan together and we'll go from there Okay, so we hit that with a wire wheel just so we can see what we're looking at. I think I'm going to take and scarf this off now. Get this back down to this original bevel. So let's go to that point. got our weld all scarfed off beveled this roughly we're gonna go ahead and grab a grinder clean that all up we'll be able to match up where this goes by these two break points so I'm not too worried about that all right let's get a grinder and clean it up
Okay, so we want as much of the material clean, as clean as we can. And I think we've done that. We've beveled this so that we can fill that up with weld. You can see this is all ground fairly smooth. I'm gonna hit that with a wire wheel so the plasma slag doesn't mess with the weld. Probably gonna have to tack a lift and eye to this and then hook it up with the crane and just hang it here while I get it tacked up. But I guess I'm getting the cart before the horse. I'm gonna flip this over and get it all cleaned up too and ready to go. Okay, just real quick. There's a few reasons that this failed. I don't know if you can see this, but this weld is full of pinholes. You can see it really good right there. That is a terrible weld. There's hardly any penetration. So I don't know if they just didn't get it clean or what. This weld right here, you can see it's not even there's zero penetration right there. It's really just a crappy, crappy weld job. And I think it's from the factory. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, this factory weld here, scarf it off, and just bevel that all in one shot. And then I'll do the same thing on this side. But I'm gonna try to leave some of the integrity here and we'll end up filling that up with weld. This is gonna be tricky. I'm gonna to try to shave some of this off, but I can't get into this. There's a pocket here that this tooth, these are replaceable, and I can't get into that pocket, so I'm just gonna shave a little bit off of there. We'll have to fill that up with weld. I think I'm gonna do a little bit more bevel work here, and a little bit here, and then it should be ready to tack. Let's see if we can't get it done. <gasps> Holy pisser, it's hot. Okay, that's good. Ready to go. This here be all ready to go. We're beveled both sides inside and out. Everywhere where we're gonna weld is nice and clean. Should be all ready to fit up. All right we're back at it tonight. We've got a makeshift lift and eye here. I just hurried and punched a hole in it with the iron worker and I'm gonna tack it onto this piece and hang it with the crane so that we can get it positioned here where we need to and get it tacked up. I don't have a whole lot of time tonight, so I'm just gonna see if I can get it fit up and set where it needs to go and tacked up so that tomorrow night I can come out here. We're gonna have to preheat it. So we'll get it nice and preheated, get it up around 450, and then we'll start welding it out. But I don't have enough time tonight to get it fit up, preheat it, and then finish welding it out. Because if I don't finish welding it out, then I gotta come back and preheat it again. So it's better if I can do that all in one shot so all right let's see if we can't get this rigged up and put into place
going to do it for tonight. I'm going to go in and eat dinner. Now that it's 8.30. It's no wonder I have a dad bod. Alright, so we're back at it tonight. I think what I want to do is I want to tip it on its side. Where I can get to this and then I can roll it and weld all this and all this. I'll just roll it where it's positioned flat so it's easier to weld. See what we can do. Okay, I don't want to lift it. I don't want any pressure to be on that piece that's just tapped on. So I've got all the pressure on the, the main body. Another tool that's on my list is a plate clamp. And if I had one, I could bite it right here, tip it up. But I don't have one. So we're going to have to improvise. We're not going to lift with this. We're just going to tip it up and use it to hold it flat. Okay, that's pretty good. I can get to this and then roll it, get to the back side, and then it should be good. All right, so the next task, we got to preheat this. So, we're just going to go ahead and take the torch. Get her preheated. We're going to try to preheat it at about 450. We're going to check it with our temp gun, but it usually takes a while. So. Gonna go into warp mode. All right, we got it all preheated. Close to 400. Cools off pretty quick, but we're gonna get welding on it. single pass on the one side. I want to roll it now, get a single pass on the back side so that I'm not just completely welding one side and pulling it. I don't want to, I don't want to tweak it. So we're going to try to bounce back and forth. I'm going to roll it over and get a, get a full pass on the whole thing on the other side and then we'll just go to town. Okay, quick update. This top side's pretty much done. I still got a couple of things I gotta do right at the top of the square keyway. And I do have to weld inside there. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do there. But I've ran a couple passes on the on the inside here. I'm gonna try to run this vertical up. It's hard to get it positioned to where I can do it flat. I think doing it vertical up might be the ticket, so I'm gonna try it, see what happens. Okay, there's our 
here's our first pass vertical up I think that's gonna be the tick I'm just gonna keep running vertical up I might have to touch up down here at the bottom but that's that's working out pretty good we'll just lay it in there nice and heavy we're probably gonna bring it the weld out to about here so I mean we're gonna fill it up pretty good but we don't want it to break again so we're going a little little overkill but I think that's gonna work so we'll just keep working at that all right let's show you guys what we got cooking so we got the inside done here we had to weld that vertical up you know it'd be great a perfect world if you could weld everything flat but obviously it ain't a perfect world so got that welded up vertical up it's nice and heavy happy with the way it turned out if you come over on this side the crack used to be right here so it cracked up here through here and then up here so you can see got that all welded up nice and heavy it's consistent the whole way through everything looks nice and clean no pinholes all I got to do now is flip it back over and I got to weld right here because it cracked right there so that's really all that's left on the outside and then I'm gonna figure something out on the inside either stick weld it or I might just trigger it with the MIG gun and then take an end grinder clean it up and it's just gonna have to be that way uh, if I do that it's pretty much 100% penetration all the way through so I feel pretty good about it so anyway we're getting we're getting close to knocking this one out it's almost 10 o'clock so gonna try to get this one done and go in and eat some dinner final update if you can see that I just triggered that crack right there and we beveled it really good so that should be 100% penetration I was able to get a weld across here up here and then down this corner where the other crack was clean that all up cleaned off our lift and I tacks I'm gonna leave this one on the table because it's still hotter than a firecracker but I'll just leave it here and let it cool move on to the next one so that's number one I'm gonna go to bed um Number two up here on the table. Just getting ready to get cracking on it. So I'm wondering if they haven't already tried to weld this one. I don't know that for sure. It's strange to me that it would snap off like that. So here's the problem. You can see how much material is left there. I can't just I can't just cut that off and put a new one on. For one, I don't have the ability to, to bend something with that kind of profile. So I'm gonna have to weld the one that we have. It's over there on the pallet. I'm gonna have to take that piece, weld it back on. When I do that, in order to get full pen or full penetration, I'm gonna have to bevel all this. But I need to keep this profile so that I can match it up where it was. So that's going to be a little tricky, but we're going to see we're going to see what we can do with it. The other thing we got to deal with is our hard facing right here. This welds completely different, so you can't just weld right over the top of it or you're going to get a crappy weld. So we're going to scarf that off. We'll scarf off a little bit here where we think we're going to get into this area and then try to Try to get an idea on how we're going to do this. Might have to do a little brainstorming. Alright, let's see what we can figure out. Okay. 
Okay, so just to give you guys a look at the other half. There's the brake right there. We're probably going to have to strip the hard facing off about an inch and a half back into here so that we can get a good weld on here. I'm going to get the plasma out, just try to clean this up, scarf some of this off, and just start getting it prepped. This side all beveled, cleaned up. You have to get it clean. If you don't get all this clean, it'll probably just fail again because that's where the cracks start. Okay, so we peeled back our hard face, so we got a little bit of room. I'm hoping there's enough in there to stack a pretty good one in. Look at this other side. Got it all cleaned up nice and beveled as well. If you look, Right there, right there, there's a start of a crack that comes down right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat that up with the torch. Usually if you heat it up, you can see exactly where the crack's going. It looks like it stops about right here. So I'm going to gouge that out with the grinder, weld it up, and then we should be good. But you don't want to leave something like that because it's just another weak point that something could, could start. So. All right, we're gonna see if we can't find it. All right, we heated up our crack. Hopefully you guys can see that. Comes right down here, and it actually goes clear to about right there. So we gotta gouge out the grinder from here down to there. <clears throat> then we're gonna go ahead and weld that up probably grind that flat again and then this piece will be ready and then we'll start prepping this so we'll go to that point got ourselves a good healthy deep gouge there. We're going to fill that up with weld. I traced the crack clear down. Should be good. So we're going to weld that up real quick. Okay, so here's what it looks like so far after beveling it. We're going to hit it with a grinder. As you can see, there's a big crack right here. And it looks to me, that's completely buried under weld, so it looks to me like that was there from when they built it, or if it was, this was repaired. I don't know, but it's, it's crappy craftsmanship, basically. They left a void there. Just another place where it weakened this section. We're gonna try to gouge that out, weld it up. We'll hit the rest of this with a grinder, and then it's gonna be time to fit. Let's do it. Okay, here's what's going down. I've got it rigged up with the crane. Joint looks really good. We don't have a whole lot of gap in any one spot. 
feel good about the bevel. We're gonna get 100% penetration. I do have one tack right here holding it right now. I'm gonna get up on top and just to make sure that it is where it's supposed to be, pulling a measurement across here, then checking it on both ends up here as well. That way I know that it's not ski whomper. It looks to be correct. The way the, the way the joint fits together, looking good. So anyway, that's what's going down. I'm gonna check it, make sure that looks right. Put a few more tacks on it and we can start welding it out. So let's see if we can't get it fit up where, where it belongs. Got it all fit up. It looks good. It was absolutely miserable. <clears throat> Took me probably half an hour before I got it where I wanted it. Part of that is probably my own fault for being anal. But if I measure from here to here, about 10 and 3 quarter. And if I measure from here to here, 10 and 3 quarter. So it's it's just about perfect. It's the same distance, staying the same distance the whole way as it comes around. So now that it's fit up, I've put several tacks on it. Start rolling it around. We'll get a single pass on the whole thing. Put a little bit on this side, put a little bit on the other side, bounce around, get the whole thing welded out with one pass, and then we'll start really laying the wire to it. So let's get moving. good it's consistent from here to here as it goes up that's gonna knock out number two gonna put it back over on the pallet probably go in and eat some dinner see if we can't get after number three tomorrow signing off till then all right here we are another day another dollar so we're gonna move on to our number three bit We've got to get the pilot bit out of this one. 
we're either going to spin it out or we're going to cut it off. If we can't spin it out, we'll cut it off, but I want to try spinning it out first so that we can get our new keyway piece machined and fit onto this and weld it out. That's, that's what we have to do on this one and this one. So I'm going to try to stand this up. I'm going to heat it up with a torch, see if I can't get it to bust loose and we'll just see what happens. I'd like to do this without busting my concrete. Okay, so this pilot bit is obviously hammered. There's like nothing left of these pockets. There's only one tooth left. So we're going to heat this up. And then we're going to beat it with the hammer. And try to get it to loosen up. It's uh, Sometimes they're pretty stubborn coming out, but we're going to see what we can do. So here goes nothing. grease is on fire that's always a good sign the grease is heated up so much you can hear it popping stuff so it's good and hot I'm gonna try it again right now nothing it ain't coming so I guess that means we're gonna haul it outside with a forklift flip it on side and I'm just gonna torch it off. It's not worth fighting it this much, so yeah. Let's just get it out there, get it cut off, and move on with life. cut off we were able to scarf off a bit and we didn't we didn't harm the, the outer face so pretty pleased with how it came out I'm just gonna hit this with a grinder to make sure we don't have any high spots and then obviously hit all this with a wire wheel clean up all around it because that's where the the new machine piece is going to have to weld to. Once that's ready to go, we can get those pieces around stock machined, get them welded on. Let's get this back inside 
and then we'll see if we can't start on our round stock project. Okay, so what we got here is a piece of 1018 6 inch round stock. So this way is convex. And this way is severely concave. For this project, it probably isn't too big a deal, but I'd like to try to make it square. So I think what we're going to do, we'll get it in the saw. We'll cut the first one. We'll see how square my saw cuts it. If it's good and square or close to it, I'm actually going to cut it just a little bit bigger. We'll throw it in the lathe. We'll face it off both sides. And then we'll go ahead and get this laid out. I am hoping, I'm hoping I can just torch the square keyway. I should be able to. I got to make sure I got a big enough tip for my torch, but I think that's the route I want to go. Machining it where it's three inches thick, that might be pretty tough. I don't have an end mill that long, so I'd have to machine the square, flip it, machine it, which is not impossible, but if I can just torch it and get it to turn out good, why not? So we're going to get it in saw. We'll see how the cutting goes and we'll go from there. Okay, so our stock's in the saw. Cutting something this big, we're just going to want to go really slow, keep it wet, and hopefully we don't have any issues with the blade popping off or the stock getting torqued out of the vise or whatever. So we're just going to go nice and slow. Nice and easy. Okay, so we got our piece of steel over here in the lathe. We flipped our jaws, we got it chucked from the outside. We're just gonna face this off, flip it over, face the other side off. We'll make sure this is exactly three inches. If it's a little bit over, that's not a big deal. I'm gonna have to drill a hole for a 5 8 bolt, I believe, and then I'm gonna have to counter bore it an inch and a half so that they can the bolt head clears and they can get a socket down in there if they need to, to tighten it up. So I don't have one, I've got to order it, so it's going to be a day or two before I get the part, but that's how it goes, I guess. So we're going to get this faced off right now. All right, let's, let's do it. that done perfectly square we're gonna flip it over we've got just a hair to take off to get to exactly three we'll flip it over touch up this other side let's do it I just want to put a nice chamfer on this. Put the compound at 45 just because I want to be able to use the compound and have enough travel. I want to put a pretty big chamfer on it. That's why I'm using the compound.
good enough for what we're doing. So now we'll get it over to the table and we're going to start laying it out. Alright. Okay. We got our piece in the mill here in the chuck. We had to take one of the jaws out because it won't go six inches, which I think is kind of ridiculous. It goes like five and seven eighths or something. But anyway, we got it in the vise. We're just gonna drill our hole. Figure there's no reason we shouldn't do that now. So we're gonna get a hole drilled so that when the when I do get the torch tip, I can just go to town. So here goes nothing. Okay, so we got the hole drilled as close to the corner as possible. I'm gonna have to do some thinking on this one. I'll get back to you. Okay, so we're back out here today. I did make it to the welding store and I got a torch tip. This is a number four, which is made for cutting through heavier stuff. It's actually rated for cutting three inch thick stuff. So I think we're just going to risk it and we're going to go ahead and flame cut the first one. I want to see how it goes. So you can see I drilled that hole. I'm going to put it on the forks of the forklift and I'll clamp it down to a piece of flat bar or something. I'll rig it up somehow. But I'm just going to go for it and I'm going to try it. So we're just going to see how it goes. My main concern is that it's going to harden it to the point where when I drill the hole through the center, it's going to be so hard that I'm not going to be able to punch through. Now, I don't know, I guess it's, I guess it's a risk we're taking. If we have to, we'll be able to drill probably clear to here, and then if it won't punch through there, I'll just take a torch and finish the hole. There's there's just no way around it so um, I was looking into having somewhere in Salt Lake possibly water jet cut it but with time and everything and cost that I didn't include in my bid I'm just gonna risk it on this one and see if I can't just flame cut the holes so we're gonna get all set up we'll get it out there there's a trailer with a fridge on it that's for my father-in-law just sitting there anyway so I'm gonna get it set up out there and we're gonna give it a try so here goes nothing all right we've got our part all set up here I got the pressures adjusted on my tanks to run this tip which is number four and we're just gonna give her hell so here goes nothing
this face right here is angled. I didn't cut it straight. So, I can't straighten that up. And that is hot, hot tamale. Okay, so we've got our end grinder here with a carbide burr. We're just gonna go in here, try to clean that up, get the high spots out. I mean, it's not, it's not perfect, you know. It's not perfect, you know. So we're gonna go ahead and knock those high spots down and then we'll just try it with our pilot bit until it goes. We want it to be as snug as possible. And then I'm gonna let it cool. And then once it's cool, I'm gonna drill the hole and see how that goes. That's gonna be the deciding factor on, well, it isn't a deciding factor because we're at the point of no return now. So this is the route we're going and hopefully it all goes smooth, but you never know. It just might get a little Western. So here we go. We'll be back. Okay. So with some coaxing from the end grinder and trim the corners, that baby fits in snug as a bug in a rug. So I think that's good. Now fingers crossed that we'll be able to drill it through. I'm going to start laying it out once it gets cool enough to even touch it. It's pretty smoldering hot right now. But I'm going to lay it out and try to make it so that we can get the bolt in. Okay, that's the way we want it right there. If it's the best that way. All right, here goes nothing. Okay, so while we're waiting for this one to cool, I've drilled the hole in this one to give myself a start point for the torch. And I think I'm just gonna take it over, get it cut out. Like I said, we're at the point of no return, so. We're gonna make it work either way. So I'm gonna take this over, cut it. There's no point in you guys going through that again. So I guess we'll uh, go into warp mode. Okay, we got our second keyway done. That fits good. I like it. So they've both been cut. Now we just need to let them cool. Uh, our end mill for the counter bore should show up in the mail tomorrow. We've got our drill all picked out and ready to go. We're just waiting on parts again. Fingers crossed, hopefully once they cool, they won't be so hard we can't drill through it, but I guess we'll know tomorrow. So. See you tomorrow. All right, good news. The mail came. We got our end mail. So we can machine our counter bore. Our parts are cool. So we're going to go ahead and get those laid out, get them in the mill, and start machining the hole and the counter bore for the bolt that holds our pilot bit in and then we're ready to weld them on. I'm really hoping to try to get these done tonight. Let's get over and see if we can't get them knocked out.
So we've got it laid out here. We've transferred our lines to the sides. Going to go ahead and measure center here. Center pop it on both sides. And then we're going to get it in the mill. We'll obviously have to level it. And I'll show you guys how I'm going to do that. Got our center pop, both sides. Let's get it over the mill. All right, so we've got our centering head here. Gonna make sure it's a perfect 90. Make sure the magnets on it are clean. If you get grit on those, sometimes it'll throw it off. So you wanna make sure everything's good there. We're gonna put that point in our center pop. Set that down to where it's nice and snug. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and level it. So that's level. The other thing you want to do is it's always a good idea to check your mill too to make sure they match. So I've got this little flange level here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make a match. You see it's just favoring that side a little bit and so is that one. That's plenty of precision for what we're doing here. Now we're going to take our center drill. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to get us lined up dead center with where we want our hole to be. We're going to get this perfectly lined up. So that's perfectly lined up with our center pop mark. I think we're ready to drill it. Fingers crossed, hoping it ain't too hard. We're about to find out. <laughs> the trick is to not move the table. So we're just going to drop the knee and put our bit in. We're gonna start by drilling a pilot hole. So if it's gonna be hard, it's gonna be hard once we get close to where we flame cut it. counter bore it. Okay so I've got my end mill here in my three-quarter end mill holder. It's got an R8 shank on it for my mill. We need to figure out how deep we want to go. I don't want to make these different because then when they go to change the pilot bit if somebody puts the bolt in the wrong way, it'll chew up the nut side because it's not it's not in the counter bore far enough. So to avoid that, we'll just make both sides 700 thou. So we'll just cut both sides 700 thou deep. So that's what we're shooting for. So here's what I'm going to do. Stop my depth right there. Now I'm going to take my depth gauge and run this up. This is just how I like to do it. If you do it this way, it ensures you don't go too deep. We know we want to go 700 thou. So I'm going to take 700 thou, lock that in, and then I'm going to just tighten this to where it's just barely snug, and we're going to go from there.
the right pressure to the point where it's not chattering is the hard part. You can see it's in a really good place right now. Well, I'm just going to hold it there. Just keep that constant pressure. Once you find the sweet spot, and it'll just continue to cut. This side's cutting a lot better. Oof, that's dang close. We're gonna go a little bit deeper. And just in case you were wondering, these make fantastic slivers. So, next time you need a party favor. Alright, let's get this out of the vise and check it. Now we're hoping that our bolt lines up on both holes. Normally you would try to drill this straight through. But I don't have a bit that long, so we're just hoping it's good enough. They taste really well, too. Here's what we got. Got that done, bolt slips through. We don't have any slop between this and this. It's nice and tight. We'll be able to get our nut on here. So we get our nut on there and we'll be able to get a socket on there. This side, we're able to fit a socket in there so that when they put it together and take it apart, that's what we were hoping for. So now, one down, one to go. I'm going to take this one over, get it done, same process as that one, and tomorrow night I'm going to plan on welding those two up. So we'll do the machining tonight, get that done, and then we'll weld those up tomorrow. Okay, we've got our bit stood up. I'm gonna go ahead and grind this smooth so that we don't have any clearance issues. We'll set that on there. We wanna make sure that the bolt slides through this way so that it doesn't interfere with the teeth. So we'll get that all prepped up, ready to go. And then I'm gonna weld solid around this whole thing and build it clear up. And once that's done, I can take and hard face the sides of this like they did on the other one. I gotta hard face the pilot bit. Let's do it. I'm just gonna use my tape. Try to get it as centered as possible. Okay, that's saying it's perfect right there, so. I'm gonna 
flip it over, set it up on the table so I don't have to bend over, and then I'll just twist it where I need to twist it or lay it on the side or whatever and get this welded out. In a sea of the dying and shameless uh, A sea of the aimless I don't wanna be one of the nameless I'ma wake up with the mindset That one day I'm gonna make it And I don't think I'll be fine If I don't break my limitations Don't try to stop me I exist to write your story I'll make a decision If I want some peace Or if I want the glory yeah. Don't want a life That is complacent Or possibly boring yeah. Just want a life That is worth every day exploring yeah. My whole life I just wanted someone who would notice me My whole life I just wanted to be somebody to be Yeah, I just wanna be great Yeah, I just wanna be great Yeah, I just wanna be great Yeah, 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 yeah. Appreciate all that is vacant It's just for the taking If you make up your mind, you can take it I'm never complacent I would work in a mansion or basement, yeah There's no replacement for persistence It's a patience, yeah In this life, I wanna be soaring To feel sun inside when it's pouring And I'll fight till anxiety is boring I'm so sick of my mind's extortion My whole life I just wanted someone who would notice me My whole life I just wanted to be somebody to be Yeah, I just wanna be great Yeah, I just wanna be great Yeah, I just wanna be great yeah, yeah. Okay, quick update I switched the gas over to C10, which is a carbon dioxide argon mix. Turned the welder down just a little bit. It's down to 25 volts. Threw in the hard facing wire. Got the bit hard faced. Hard faced the side of the key. Cleaned it up with the wire wheel. That's gonna wrap this one up. One down, one more to go. But it's 10 o'clock, so. I think I'm gonna go inside, find something to eat, and hit the sack. We'll hopefully wrap this one up tomorrow, so. All right, we'll go from there. We're gonna see if we can't get this one put together, put it on a pallet, and then we'll see if we can't get the other one knocked out. I'm just throwing a little bit of anisease on here. Every little bit helps. If this were to come off after they drill with it, it'd be a Christmas miracle, but we're gonna give it every chance we've got, so. There we go. Okay, got her all tightened down. We're gonna get this one off the table, onto a pallet. We're gonna get the other one outside. I think I'm gonna have to torch that other pilot bit off, so we'll go to that point. This one's a little different. I can't tell if it's welded on or not. There is a line right here that where it could be screwed on. I'm gonna heat it up. I'm gonna try beating on it with a hammer. If it doesn't move, I'm just gonna cut it off. So let's give it a try. Well, 
you win some, you lose some. That one came out. It's hot. Whoever owns this drill did a good job of putting a lot of anti-seize on that. I had to beat on it for quite a while, but once it popped, it started shooting anti-seize out of that crack, and it's completely coated up in there, so that's a good thing. Just talked to the customer. They still want the square key system on this. They have too hard of a time getting these, these thread kind. They, they're too hard to get out. Once they start drilling, they seize up on them. So I'm gonna clean this out with some brake cleaner, get it all cleaned up. I'm gonna buff the outside, get nice clean metal, and then we'll get it inside on the table, start fitting it for the for the square key. It's actually a relief to hear that because I went through and took all that time to machine that piece. So I just wanted to make sure. So let's get this cleaned up. Okay, we got our 36 inch back in here, standing up. We're gonna take and clean this up with a grinder, get it nice and clean, clean metal, bare clean metal. And then we'll get our key over here, fit it up just like we did the last one. Looks like we're gonna be close to this tooth, just like, just like on the last one. Let's see if we can't get this fit up. Started cleaning this off. Well, that's so square. I think what I want to do, I'm going to take the torch and I'm going to bevel this. I beveled the last one with a grinder, but I think I'll get a better bevel if I torch this. And then I'll set the key on it. I'll clean this up out here where we're going to build the weld up. I think that's going to work a little better. Let's go ahead and bevel that. Thing that's left to do is to hard face the pilot bit. I've had it sitting in the key 
so that the heat can soak up into this and then I don't have to preheat it. And it worked, it's, it's pretty dang hot. So now I'm able to just go ahead and I'm gonna hard face all the, all the spots on this where it gets real heavy wear. And once I get that hard faced, that's gonna wrap this one up. So let's see if we can't get this one knocked out. Got them wrapped up. All the hard facings done. that's going to wrap another one up. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. <laughs> Hello. Just fitting this up. This reamer. Why? Ah, oh, jeez. You should be used to that. I've been doing it for the last 14 years. That doesn't mean I don't love you. It just means I got stuff to do. I don't know. Whatever you think. I'm letting you decide. Yep. <sighs> uh. full of dirt. It's my teeth. We're gonna try to treat a little. <laughs> Let's see if we can't get this one locked.